Well, thank you, Anita, for inviting me today to be a part of the SEI Virtual Forum. It's an exciting opportunity for me um, because I certainly have felt for a long time, having been a, an IT professional uh, doing this kind of work for more years than I like to talk about, um, the importance of agile development in terms of the delivery of IT capability, uh, regardless of what organization you're in. Certainly, um, many of you may know my background. I started out in the automotive industry, um, and in the automotive industry, information technology was a key part of everything that we did, not only from the standpoint of the back room, uh, but also in terms of the way that we did manufacturing. And now having had the opportunity to work in state government and now moving on to the huge enterprise of Department of Defense, it's really come to my awareness more and more um, that information technology is not only essential to everything we do at DOD, but our ability to deliver that capability quickly um, and in a way that we can actually implement it into DOD is so essential uh, to moving us forward. You know, within DOD, just to give you some backdrop, uh, and many of you I know work in large industry, um, but I have over 15,000 networks. Uh, we service about 2 million individuals, uh, both a million on the civilian side and over a million on our military side. And our military folks are really distributed, as all of you know, across the globe. So when you talk about information technology for DOD, we're talking much more than the backroom systems. We're talking about using agile development to provide capability all the way to the warfighter, regardless of where they are around the world. And as all of you will recognize, that information technology is an essential part of what the Department of Defense does to really enable our servicemen and women to do what they need to do to protect the nation. Now, Agile development has been something that's been in discussion at DOD for a long time, um, and parts of DOD have been using Agile development. But clearly, the challenges that the Department of Defense is facing today really brings the need for Agile development into the forefront as we look at our information technology strategy going forward. And why is that? Well, first of all, I don't think it's any secret that we're facing significant budget pressures. Um, you only have to pick up your local newspaper to see the large cuts the Department of Defense is going to need to take, uh, really to be a part of the challenges that the government's facing overall. And in order to really be able to deliver um, the IT capability, the budget pressures mean two things. First of all, it means we need to be a good custodian of our technology dollars. The Department of Defense spends close to $38 billion a year on information technology. And that money needs to be used to deliver capability more quickly. Secondly, our customers, the military, wants delivery much faster than what we're able to do today. Our young men and women come in expecting that they're going to be able to do their jobs using their smartphones the same way that they do in their private life. And our long development cycles don't really fit with that kind of demand. Just to give you an example, in studies that we've done, our acquisition programs and methodologies to bring in information technology can take up to 81 months to complete. Now, we blame that on the acquisition process, but that's not really fair. Um, the challenge for us is that acquisition process includes everything from the front end requirements gathering through bringing on an industry partner and then through delivery, through testing to the actual implementation. And clearly, 81 months by the time that we have gone through that process, the technology that we're delivering doesn't really fit the needs of our military personnel. They don't really fit where the technology is today. So the mandate for us to change and move uh, is enormous now. But, as all of you know, agile development means not just a methodology, it means a cultural change in so many of the ways that we do business. And it's that cultural change that I think is the hardest part of what we have to do. 
Nearly 33% of our information technology programs actually end up being canceled because as we move through that 81-month process, we realize that we're not going to be able to deliver the capability that we had originally intended to deliver. And almost 60%, because we're no different than any large organization in terms of delivery of capability, over 60% are late and are over budget. Of course, the challenge with that, as I always love to say, is big IT projects always have a much larger risk of over budget and under delivery. And unfortunately, within DOD, we don't do any projects that aren't big. So our risk in terms of being able to do that delivery is significant. So what we've been doing is to really, as part of our IT acquisition reform effort, look at how can we take the best practices of Agile development and not only continue to educate our information technology workforce in what that means, but broaden that into what does that mean from an overall DOD cultural uh, aspect in terms of making sure that our IT developers can use that methodology. And that's a much bigger challenge. That's not just about how do you deliver in 18 month or year increments. It's about how do we change some really fundamental practices in what we do. The other thing that's been great for DOD is that we're part of a larger government-wide effort. Uh, many of you may be familiar that the U.S. government under uh, the Chief Information Officer uh, published a 25-point IT reform plan. And a part of that plan was moving to the use of Agile development methodologies. And what we at DOD have done, as well as other government agencies like Department of Homeland Security and Department of Agriculture, we've been moving to establishing the framework and workbook, if you will, for how we implement Agile development within our own organizations. And one of the things that we're doing as part of our best practices committee for all of U.S. government is to share the way each of us is looking at Agile development. So again, we're not only looking at it from a DOD perspective, but we're a part of a broader look across the federal government from an information technology perspective on what an Agile development method Methodologies mean. But again, there are some uniquenesses at DOD because of the way that we have always done IT procurement uh, and the way that we've always done IT implementation. Now, I'd like to go through some of those cultural and process changes that have been so necessary and important at DOD. One of them is that it's very, very important for us that we have a governance process that actually promotes Agile IT development. Today, our acquisition process is focused on the delivery of very large weapon systems, very large, tangible, physical things that you see at the end. Whether it's a radio system, whether it's a weapon system, we're very used to, first of all, doing development of a DOD-specific solution, and we're also used to the need to have a very rigorous requirements process up front, to have a very rigorous set of processes, because we're accountable for the dollars that we spend to Congress, uh, as well as internally. Now, unfortunately, when we do that, it's very hard for us to think about how to break that up into smaller deliverable chunks, if you will, that are necessary. And a lot of that means now that we can't simply write and sign off on requirements and then turn it over to the acquisition organization to look at delivery. We have to find a way to have the user involved all the way through the development process. Now, for many of you, you'd say, well, what's new about that? We do that all the time. But for Department of Defense, that's not the way we've always delivered weapon systems. And so making that move into the way that we deliver information technology is actually a cultural change for us. And so as we look at very large development projects, and as many of you know, um, ours aren't actually only in the hundreds of millions, but we actually get into a billion dollar projects as we're looking at this, thinking about how we 
chunk that up and deliver it, um, and actually look at our, our ongoing requirements process, have the user involved, have a much stronger governance process where there's a high-level body that actually adjudicates changes and looks at how do we manage agile development from a risk mitigation standpoint is extremely important. And I'd like to pause there because I think one of the challenges with agile development is that many times when we look at IT projects, we think of how do we avoid risk or how do we ensure that risk doesn't happen. And that's the problem with a waterfall process. That's what you're trying to solve by doing all your requirements up front. Agile really is, I think, more of a process that says how do we manage risk, not how do we avoid it, how do we ensure that by having rigid requirements up front that we're not going to have any risk as we develop and deliver? That's not what IT is about anymore. What we have to look at is Agile is a way for us to be able to, in small parts, mitigate our risk, make the changes that we need after a small increment of delivery, and then be able to build on that to get to the next stages of our delivery. And that's a tough concept at DOD. I mean, we like to think about how do we make sure that we're ironclad and we're not going to have any risk as we move into development and delivery. And what we're very much realizing is that's not the way to move forward. The other thing is that with that process, we eliminate the ability to bring in innovative technologies. We eliminate the ability to bring in what industry has that may be best practices or may be good enough. It might not meet all of our requirements, but from a cost-benefit standpoint, it may give us a solution that allows us to deliver much more quickly and turn our solutions. And perhaps that's a different way of looking at the way we deliver from what we do today. But there are other areas within DOD that are challenges for us. We're used to prototyping, but of course, agile development is actually using prototyping to get to solutions and then delivering on those prototypes. Another area that's going to be really difficult for us to think through is we have very, very rigid testing and accreditation of applications before they go into the field. Now, you could well imagine how important that is with our size and scope. But unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to the kind of agile development where you're delivering and then you're testing, you're delivering and then you're testing. It again is risk mitigation where we have to get used to that kind of delivery rather than a single delivery where we do a full scale test and development. We also have to get better at being able to move to standard platforms. You know, agile development doesn't work if you're building from what I call the data center all the way up to the application. We have to move to standard platforms and then we'll be building on top of those, we'll be introducing innovative technology, but we also don't have to test the entire stack of the technology. We only have to test the application that actually resides on that technology. It also gives us a way to do testing ranges in a way that we can implement our technology on those standard platforms. So as you can see, it isn't just about the development. It's very much about the way we think of our complete infrastructure and then how agile development can actually be used to get these applications out much more quickly. Now there's also a people piece of this. Um, as we talk about risk mitigation and looking at projects differently, we always think about the developer side of Agile and what it means to train our developers, to actually be able to iterate, to be able to train our developers on how to actually put out this capability in smaller pieces. But you know, it's actually more about the users than it is about the developers. We have to get users comfortable with specifying a set of their uh, requirements in a broader context, but then being able to iterate and be able to look at that capability as it's being delivered and make the distinction between what did I think I wanted, wanted from an absolute standpoint to what's good enough 
for me to get to a delivery? How do I trade off that rapid delivery versus the requirements that I thought I wanted in the beginning? And then it's the ability to adjudicate those kinds of things with senior level management in some cases, where they need to be involved in that risk reward decision process. So it's much more than training developers. It's much more around bringing customers and users in, looking at the risk aversion methodologies and saying, no, 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 this is about mitigating, and then being able to get people to say, yes, this is good enough for this increment, and now I'm going to take what I've learned to look at what I need for my next level of requirements. And that's a huge challenge in terms of the way we're used to developing software today. Lastly, it really means that we are going to need to develop collaboration platforms. You know, we're very used to getting people in a room um, and having meetings in order to have that discussion. And now we have so many tools to be able to do that collaboration, to be able to create repositories and libraries of functionality uh, that we can all share and use. And we all have to get more used to that. For those of you that are software developers, I think you all know that it's great to develop software and it's great to be the inventor and the innovator of your software. But we have to get much more used to putting together piece parts that are developed by others looking at how we can put those together. Um, and that's really what the open source revolution has done for us. It's really helped us to get to that, but within DOD, that's still a bit of a challenge for us. We're very used to having unique solutions and we really need to start to move much more to not only how do we share with each other across uh, over 200,000 IT individuals within DOD, but also how do we make use of the best practices in industry, how do we make use of open source capability in a way that's very different from what we've done before. Another area that I think is extremely important for DOD as we move into agile development is our contracting process. The way that we do acquisition today, again, is based on the way that we have always procured our weapon systems. And it's based on processes, again, that are very defined and very rigid. And it's interesting because as I've worked with our acquisition technology and logistics organization who set the parameters for our acquisition, they actually have a lot of flexibility in what we call our DOD 5000, our beloved DOD 5000, which is our acquisition process. And there's a lot of flexibility within that um, to be able to do agile development. But the challenge is that our acquisition professionals and our IT professionals don't necessarily know how to, within the process that we have, implement agile technology. And that's one of the reasons why we're developing a workbook um, that actually will educate our IT professionals as well as our acquisition professionals on how they work within the process we have today, but move toward agile development. And we've been very pleased to have the Software Engineering Institute be a major advisor to us as we move that forward. Because it's important that we're not only thinking about it from the standpoint of what we do at DOD, but we're also bringing in that outside expertise to look at our particular situation, the particular way that we have to do things, and we have some statutory requirements that we have to meet. But even within the legislative requirements, even within the rigid process that we have, we can bring in SEI. They can take a look at the way that we're doing things and make recommendations for how it fits with industry best practice. And I think that's something that's been a lesson learned for us in terms of opening our aperture and being able to work much more closely with others in the industry and also um, obviously in the academic setting, which has been terrific for us. Now, I don't mean to imply um, by this discussion that we aren't doing agile development in some areas. We are really doing agile development and it's been very, very, very successful. Um, we have several projects that the Air Force has been working on that have really developed capability to move into the field very, very rapidly.
Our global combat support system, uh, which has been developed by our Department of Information um, Technology, has really been able to move that capability into the field in 18-month increments. And it's been built on a standard platform that we've been able to use, not only for development, but also for the testing of capability uh, that I mentioned before. A couple of the Air Force's projects, the Joint Mission Planning System, uh, has been a major success in getting capability out. Um, our Integrated Strategic Planning and Analysis Network has been another that the Air Force has developed. And there are numerous other areas where we've been able to do agile development. And now what we have to do is to take those examples of agile development and get them into the mainstream so that they're more the normal way that we do development as opposed to being in pockets uh, in those areas where uh, those organizations have taken really, really innovative approaches. So with that, again, uh, I think it's been a terrific opportunity for me uh, to really be a part of the virtual forum. I think having a virtual forum in and of itself is a great message um, around the way that we can collaborate and the way we can all look at doing uh, development much more rapidly. Uh, but again, for us at DOD, the important thing is that this isn't only about doing software development better um, it's not about doing it more cheaply, but it's about delivering capability. And for us, capability means a number of things. First of all, as many of you have heard us talk about, being able to deliver our capability in a way that's secure is becoming increasingly important for us. The challenges that we face from a cybersecurity perspective are daunting and they are growing more every, every day. And so our ability to deliver our capability quickly also means that we can deliver the capability to be able to secure our networks, to be able to secure our applications. But more importantly, all of this means that we can get capability into the hands of the men and women who service and protect us every single day. And that's something that's foremost in our mind at Department of Defense. And it's really where we, as IT professionals, really have a requirement to make sure that we're doing our jobs in a way that let the men and women out there do their jobs to protect the nation. Thank you.